Good day, students. Welcome to mathematics class. The topic before us this morning says inverse variation. Inverse variation. As we all know that we have some types of variation. So today we want to dwell on this inverse variation. And mind you, when we're talking about inverse, like the knowledge we know about it, let's say x varies to y. That's x varies to y. When we're talking about varies, it means 1 over Therefore, it makes x equals to k over y, where k equals constant. As we all know, by the time we introduce k into variation sign, due to the knowledge that we have in the past, so x equals to k over y, k is constant, k is a factor affecting the situation at that time. So I'll just give us some examples on this. Examples. Number one, if x varies inversely as y, let's take note about that one. If x varies inversely as y and x equals to 5.5 .5 when y equals 8. So we are asked to find some values here. Number one, we are to find x when y equals 10. Question number two, we are to find y when x equals 16. These are the questions I want us to look at under question number one. If x varies inversely as y, and x equals 5.5 .5 when y equals 8, we are to find x when y equals 10, and we are to look for y when x equals 16. So let's try to solve this question now. Don't forget that this question we are not asked to look for the relationship, but we just have to get the relationship because relationship will serve as a base to whatever we want to get. If you did not get the relationship, there's no way that you can continue to solve this problem. So the first thing we are going to do here is that we look for relationship. Don't forget the question is that say x varies inversely. That is x varies inversely to y. Therefore, x equals to k onto y, where k equals constant. The first statement that was given, x equals 5.5 .5 and y equals 8. So we'll substitute this value to our k onto y. That is 5.5 .5 will now be equals our k onto 8. From this place, we'll try to look for the value of k by using cross multiplication. k equals 5.5 multiplied by 8. Let's try to work it. 5.5 multiplied by 8. 8 by 5 will give me 40. We are keeping the 0. This one will also give me 40 plus 4. That's 44. To one decimal place, so we're having a k equals to 44. Don't forget 
That's what I said that time. We've gotten the k. We'll now substitute our k back to this original equation. Therefore, x equals to 44 over y. This one is called relationship. So as many questions that want to solve now, we'll be using the relationship to solve these questions that we are asked to solve under this question number one. This is our real uh, equation now. Now let's try to look at the first question as we are still solving the question. On this note, we have x equals to 44 over y. Don't forget the first question I was given. It means when y equals 10, therefore x equals to 44 divided by 10. x equals to, when you divide this one, will give me 4.4. That is when um, y equals 10. The second question there, we have question number two. We are asked to look for y when x equals 16. Don't forget our original equation, which is x equals 44 over y. Our x this time around is equals to 16. It means we are having 16 equals to 44 over y and we'll cross multiply. If you are crossing multiply, this one will give us 16y to be equals to 44. We'll try to divide through by 16. So this one and this one will go. I'm left with y equals, let's divide this one also. Four can go in both 44 and 16. How many four do we have here? We're having four. How many four do we have here? That's 11. It means we're having 11 over four, which is empty as four in 11 will give us two remainder three over four or 2.75. That's all about example number one. It means when our, y, when our x equals to 16, our y equals 2.75. That's question number one. Let's take another example. Number two, if P varies inversely as a cube of Q, yes, if P varies inversely as Q raised to part 3, on this note, we now have the value of P to be equals 8 when Q equals 2.5. So we are asked to find this. This time around, we are asked to look for the equation connecting P and Q. That's question number one. Question number two. And we are asked to look for the value of um, Q here when P equals 216. So this is the question that we quickly want to solve now. The question says P varies inversely as the Q raised to power 3. P equals 8 when Q equals 2.5. We have to find the equation that connecting P and Q, likewise the value of Q, when P equals 2 and 6. So let's try to solve this question also. The question says, 
P varies one Q raised to power three. Therefore, P equals to we introduce our constant K into Q raised to power three, where K equals constant. Don't forget, and this one will be the equation we are going to substitute the value of k after we must have solved the problem. So we are given p to be equals 8 and q to be equals um, 2.5. So let's solve it together by putting our values there to uh, substitute them there. It means that p equals k over q raised to power 3, 8 equals k into 2.5 raised to power 3. I would like us to look at this one very well. This is 8 equals k into, this is 2.5 raised to power 3 means 2.5 in 3 places, not 2.5 multiplied by 3. So let's work it in 3 places, 2.5 multiply by 2.5. 5 times 5 will give us 25. We are keeping our 2. 5 times 2, 10 plus 2, making 12. This one will give us 10. We are left with 1. 2 times 2, 4 plus 1. That is 5. We are having 5, 2, 6. With two decimal places. This is 1, 2. Let's multiply by the third one because this is raised to power 3. 2.5. 5 multiplied by 5 will give us 25, keeping 2 as well. 5 multiplied by 2, 10 plus 2, 12. We are keeping 1 this time around. 5 multiplied by 6, 30 plus 1, 31. 2 by 5 will give us 10. We are keeping 1. 2 by 2, 4 plus 1, making 5. 2 times 6, that will give us 12. So let's add everything together. This one gives us 5. That will give us 5. 2. 1 plus 5 will give us 6. 3 plus 2 will give us 5. And 1. Don't forget the decimal place is here. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So this one gives us 15.625. 15.625. We also cross multiply. Therefore, K equals to 15.625 multiplied by 8. So let's multiply it by 8 and let's see what it will give to us. This one gives us 15.625 multiplied by 8. 8 times 5 gives us 40. We are keeping 4. 8 times 2, 16. Plus 4, 20. We are keeping 2. 8 multiplied by 6 will give us 48 plus 2. 50 is 0. We are to keep 5. 8 by 5. 40 plus 5. That will give us 45. This time around, we are having 4. 8 times 1 plus 4, 12. How many decimal places? 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So it means K equals to 125. After we must have arrived at this, don't forget we we'll substitute the value of k down to this place. Therefore, p equals 1 to 5 over q raised to power 3. This one is called equation. So this is the equation we are going to use to solve as many questions that they might give unto us on this. So let's take the second question. The first one says we should look for the relationship or the equation connecting P and Q. We've done that. This is the equation that connects P and Q. As many questions, like what I said, we'll be using this one to solve the problem. Why the second question now asks us to look for the value of Q when P equals to 216. It means P equals to 125 all over Q raised to power 3. 216, the value of our P to be equals to 125 all over Q raised to power 3. 
on this note, we also cross multiply. We are having 216 multiplied by Q raised to power 3 to be equal to 125. Coefficient of Q raised to power 3 is 216. So we divide both sides by the coefficient of Q raised to power 3, which is 216. 216 divided by 216. 216 here, 1. 216 here will go. We are now left with Q raised to power 3 to be equal to 125 all over 216. Now, we are not looking for Q raised to power 3, we are looking for Q. How do we get our Q on this note? This is what we are going to do to get our Q. It means we now try to look for the cube root of both sides. That is, cube root both sides. Both sides means left hand side and right hand side that we want to cube root. It means I'm having Q raised to power 3. This is what I mean by cube root of this to be equals to 125 over 216 of cube root. So this one will go with this. I'm left with Q. What this one is saying is that what number will give me 125 if I multiply it in three times? You will agree with me that when I say 1 raised to power 3, 1 raised to power 3 will give me 1. 2 raised to power 3, that's 2 in 3 places, will give me 8. 3 raised to power 3 will give me 27. 4 raised to power 3 will give me 64. 5 raised to power 3 will give me 125. 6 raised to power 3 will give me 216. And so on and so forth, down to 10. But since we've gotten what we are looking for here, let me just stop here. It means 125 of Q raised to power 3 will give me 5. So it means this 125 will now give me 5 onto 216, which is going to give me 6. So this is the final answer. That is the value of uh, Q. When P equals 216, we give us 5, divided by 5 over 6. That's all about uh, question number 2. Let's take another one more example. Before we take our assignment, that's example number 3. Example number 3 says, if V varies inversely to F, V varies inversely to F, that's 1 over F, and we are given, and V equals 12, when F equals 10. So we are asked to find the value of F when V equals 3. So let's look for the value of F when V equals 3. It means what we have here is this. V varies to 1 over F. Therefore, V equals to K over F. Don't forget our K equals constant. V equals 12, F equals 10, based on the statement that was given unto us here. So we now substitute this value to this equation here. It means 12 equals to K over 10. We cross multiply, therefore K equals to 12 times 10, K equals 120. So this is the value of K. Don't forget, we'll put it back to this equation. By the time we are putting it back, V equals to 120 over F. This is the relationship, relationship between V and F. The what it asks us to look for is the value of F when V equals 3. The value of F when V equals 3. F when V equals 3. Don't forget our equation says V equals to 120 over F. So on this note, we have it as 3 equals to 120 over F. Divide both sides by 1. You cross multiply as usual. This one will give me 3F. 
3 f equals to 120. The variables are by 3, by 3. This one will go. 3 a 1. 3 here will give me 4, and in 0 will give me 0. Therefore, f equals to 40. It means when v equals to 3, f equals to 40. On this note, I want to give the assignment, but I will give you before the assignment, I want to call our attention to something just to remind us about the inverse variation. In summary, or the conclusion, inverse variation, like what I said at the beginning of the class, I told us that it means one over something that's very easy to. Like what we said, where we said, we said x varies inversely to y. So it means whenever you see one over any variable here with proportionality sign or variation sign, it means this is inverse. So please take note. And the next thing you are going to do is that you change it to x equals to k into y. Because this k is the value or the factor that's affecting this variation that makes it to be equal to sign. And we call it constant. So this one could be anything. So on this note, we want to call it a day. Do the assignments and have a nice day. Thank you, class.